Questions? Do you have a good guy acceptance speech? A good guy acceptance speech? Oh, I appreciate the award. Uh, I'm thankful. Happy holidays. Did you aspire to that also? I never knew about the award, honestly. Didn't know they gave out a good guy award. I'm uh, thankful for it, though. Appreciate it. Were you always just cooperating with media? Yeah, I was always with the media? Yeah. No. I wasn't cooperative. What changed? I left New York. Yeah, not too much. <laughs> hey, in, in training camp, I remember we had you in the field house, and you, you know, you were answering all our questions. But at one point, you said you don't like doing media. I don't. I just know how to do it. It's a difference. Did you have a better experience this year here than you thought you would? Have? Since I left New York, it's always been a better experience for us <laughs> media-wise. Definitely. I mean, they just like drama up there, like the regular, basic, good guy stories. They don't like those. You get the little small section in the in the newspaper, you know. You get in trouble, then you get the front page of the New York Times. Yeah. Do you think this reflects how you've I mean, grown you and matured? You can say that. Nah, I've always been myself, and you know, for us being in the media, uh, uh, was a little, was a little not arrogant, uh, but overly confident in myself when I coming in. Uh, I had a lot of doubters though coming in, so. Uh, not as much, but I was definitely ready to step into the role, though. Uh, you know, I, for us being prepared for it, uh, I was prepared, but I didn't think I had to do it as much. Uh, you know, took some few few injuries, a couple guy guy got suspended. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, just got to step in and keep the ship right. Uh, they ended up getting it all the way together, but you know, uh, we stayed the team. Self-motivated guys in the room. I didn't get that right off. Didn't get that right off. When Miles was suspended, you guys faced a lot of adversity. Obviously, mm -hmm. it seemed like you made a concerted effort to, to put a little more on your shoulders, not only with us but with teammates. My, more so with teammates than y'all. <laughs> you want to put it like that? Yeah. It uh, did seem like you kind of became a almost of a, a spokesman. You know, for the locker room. Just really know, spoke for the D-line, you know what I mean? And uh, just kind of fit the mold of what we were trying to get across for us, the rest of the team, you know? And uh, it's just, I kept it about ball. Uh, just telling guys, stay focused, next man up. Yeah, we lost a great player, but now it's time to make your own name. Now you ain't got to come here and be Miles Garrett, but you can come here and make plays and be yourself. Have you be been the kind of guy who wanders around the locker room and talks to everybody? Pretty much. It's kind of boring after a while. Uh, for us, like just going to meetings and going to practice and then going home. So, uh, just regular conversation, nothing major. Uh, cracking jokes here and there, talking about colleges, uh, you know, small stuff, stuff in media, current events. It's crazy. This uh, season is probably going to end with. Oh, they know. This season could end with the, uh, Chubb winning the NFL rushing title. Beckham and Langley going for 1,000 yards receiving. So how do you, how do you rationalize six wins with those individual feats? <laughs> Any given Sunday, uh, anybody can win. No matter how good a talented uh, or a talent you might be producing, uh, you still can lose a game. I, I think Derek Thomas had eight sacks in one game, seven and a half. Played the Chargers. Uh, and they're losing that game. So, you know, it happens. And, and Joe Nixon, uh, after that last game, he said, you know, if you can't wait to play you guys again. I would too if I ran for 150 yards. Is that? That don't mean he's going to win. <laughs> Being honest. But do, do you, when you hear that, does it? It's football. Promote yourself. It's okay. It's life. It goes on. No hard feelings over here for me. Show me uh, for us coming back. Uh, they still got fight in them. We knew that going in, though. You know, uh, if it wasn't for a few key plays we made for us defensively, you know, we, uh, we might have lost the game too. So I see where he's coming from, and uh, you know, we got our key thing corrections to make, and uh, you know, tighten up our run fits. So this was your fourth team in four years. Do you think you found a home? Uh, if they go on to keep me, I'm definitely will stay. <laughs> I, I ain't had a problem with a few organizations I've been with. So uh, you know. Uh, Jesse, Minnesota, you know what I'm saying? Uh, the money thing wasn't 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 right, but uh, I love that organization. Uh, I love it here. So, like I said, I'm cool. I'm happy here. Just it, didn't get the season no on it. Does it feel reciprocated more here or, or uh, the, the same? I have nothing ill will about the Minnesota Vikings. Uh, Spielman and them, uh, yeah, Rick and them over there, they coached them. Those guys was, was definitely a top-tier organization in my book. Uh, 
never they kept it completely honest with me. That's the only thing you ask for from the front office. Y'all don't talk every day, so you know what I mean. All you think you want is honesty, and uh, you know uh, they did that. You know, and then they told me what they could offer me. You know, they paid Bar A B. Uh, it wasn't enough money for me, so I uh, just left it at that. It's every year, baby. It's every year. You can have a dominant season and and they still trade you away. Ask Peyton. Um, where, hey, Chuck, where do you stand with Freddie? The job is done. And then obviously, you know, you were standing up for a teammate and obviously it wasn't something that you thought was a, a great thing to, to stand up for a teammate. Sit down. No, to be sat down after that. Yeah. I, you know. <laughs> <laughs> so where do you stand with Freddie after all? Oh, uh, we still, I mean, still close, still good. I uh, respect him to the day. Uh, for, as far as the job he did, it's his first year with a new team, you know. Uh, first year head coach job, uh, head coaching job. Uh, you know, now nah, he didn't get with the, the, the end results he wanted. He got a rushing leader back there with Chuck. Uh, Kareem got, he got all the touches he can get, and, uh, you know. And got Landry doing his thing too, Juice now. Uh, you know, the only thing I wanted more is, you know, oh, to get the ball more, but that's everybody. <laughs> that's everybody, honestly. So. So with the with him sitting down, is that a thing that you, you disagree with? But you, I definitely disagree with it, but that's my coach, so you know what I'm saying? But you I, respect it? Of course. I was just frustrated at the moment. Uh, I don't know why he took me out, you know what I mean? Uh, I was protecting my teammate. I felt like I was doing, I felt like he took me out because I was doing something bad. Yeah, I hurt the team, but I right, let me go back out there and earn my right to stay on the field. Did you get that explanation in before? Not at all. I was too busy in my own emotions. Mm. He probably didn't know the real story then. I think the referee told him what was going on, uh, or what he think was going on. Your side. It's in the game, bro. He's not really worried about my side. He's talking to the referee, so and that's pretty much what goes. So, yeah. so you, you didn't tell Freddie afterwards about what you thought was happening with Freddie getting kicked and all that? I, I, like I said, he was just playing around his head. I don't know if he kicked him or not, nothing like that. He was just doing too much around my entertainment. And it was just that, the end of that. Like, get away from him, period. No question. No question. No question. So despite that's just part of leadership and being a teammate, right? I think that's just part of my DNA. Honestly, I I don't think I don't if I wasn't a leader, I don't think I'd be <clears throat> I'd be uh any deck act any different for us that. I mean i if y'all notice I Rex Ryan. You know, Rex Ryan, you know, he was big on protecting your teammates, so uh, that kind of stuck with me all the way throughout. Especially if you go on to the opposite side, like, always. We don't leave until they get up. Despite the record, do you feel like if you brought back the coaching staff and most of the guys on the team, I know there's always turnover, but most of the key guys, that you guys can take that leap? That I believe so. Want to take? I honestly believe so. I do. What makes you say that? What makes me say that? Because uh, of the goods you see, you know? I mean, like I said, a thousand yard rusher, Thousand yard receiver. Uh, Miles probably would have broke the sack record this year. Uh, crazy thing if invited to the Pro Bowl, though. That's different. That's different. Uh, I think somebody just ended up breaking his sack record, uh, his sack season now. Chandler Jones, I think, got 15. So, you know what I'm saying? He ain't played, what, five weeks? It's kind of big, you know what I mean? Uh, it's kind of president in itself. Uh, so, yeah, I, I feel him on him being frustrated for his day. Uh, but, you know, I told him, I said, getting, getting suspended, bro, you don't you don't get the benefits of, of Pro Bowl. So. So, what's your view of Cincinnati with, you know, the playoff? We, we can't talk about the playoffs anymore. Is this all about pride? Most of Definitely about pride. Uh, professionals, sign up for 16 games. No matter if you play out potential or not, you got to get the fans what they want. Does a week feel different? Like, because we've been talking about playoffs all year and that's the goal, mm -hmm. um, like, does this week feel different than every other week? Yeah. This is the last one for us. Right. Yeah, so it feels different. So you have to fight through that? A little bit. Yeah. A little bit. A little bit. Christmas little bit. make it even more challenging? Nah, not at all. I went to sleep. <laughs> <laughs> I did. Yeah. My folks are back home, man. I went to sleep. Okay. Baker's in line to be the first quarterback to start 16 games here since 2001. Is that my model? Ah, <laughs> uh, that's different. That's different. But uh, once again, uh, I heard a lot of stats that we didn't overcame this year. You know what I mean? Uh, first time we didn't beat all three uh, divisional opponents in one season, like ever. So like, that's just crazy to me. So like I said, uh, we didn't did a lot this year. We just didn't get what we wanted. Another crazy stat for you. You win on Sunday. That's back-to-back -back seasons of at least seven wins for this franchise since 2001 and 2002. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> All right, we got our work cut out for us. Checking them off slowly. Slowly right? but surely, uh, you know, yeah. We, we didn't get what we wanted, making light of the situation, uh, but we definitely wanted to play up. We just let them, let two games get by that we couldn't let go. Uh, honestly, we owned up to it. Off to the next week of Cincinnati, honestly. Does Andy Dalton give, give the Bengals that veteran definitely. to be able to come back? And definitely. I respect him. Uh, I respect him to the fullest. Uh, Veteran quarterback, savvy, uh, knows his offense, uh, just doesn't have his, his weapons he's used to throwing to with A.J. Green being out. So, I mean, I respect him to the fullest.